Thank you for tuning in to Homeschool Homesteaders. Today we're going to talk about growing sunflowers. On the difficulty level, they'll probably be 3 out of 10. Fairly easy to grow. Most of the difficulties is keeping the birds away. And this is where I live, state of Minnesota, zones 4 or 3. Obviously, the dot is bigger for privacy reasons, but I do this to show the results will vary depending on where you live. In Minnesota, my zone, my home state, on Memorial Day weekend, that's when I recommend you plant them. Plant them one inch deep, six inches apart, and water them. Three weeks later, this is what you get. Beautiful sunflowers. All of them pretty much grew. Every seed sprouted. This here is one month later, probably the end of June. So within a month, this is what you get. So extremely fast growing plants. And like I said, all of the seeds sprouted. So this here is seven weeks later. I'm guessing this is like the first weekend of July. And the plants are about two feet tall. You know, keep in mind I planted my beans along the outside fence. Hopefully the shade from these plants will not kill my beans. But like I said, um, you could easily make a privacy fence with these sunflower. By July 20th, maybe 50 days after I planted, here you go. Maybe four or five feet tall plants. By August 1st, maybe 70 days since I planted, obviously they're growing. This is two rows. And do you see the fence behind them? So it's, like I said, good privacy fence. And now we're just waiting for those yellow, beautiful flowers. And 20 days later, here you go. You got the flowers. Now, some plants are still slow. Others are fast. But unfortunately, they don't come out at the same time. Here we have one of my kids on the ladder, and I just want you to see how tall the plants are compared to this picture in comparison. And so uh, not next couple of slides, clips, this is zooming in. We're going to see some uh, flowers up close. This is just the beginning stage, but if you need a reason to attract bees to your garden, obviously sunflowers are the way to go. Late in fall, all the other flowers are gone. And sunflowers are still left. So the bees just switch to sunflowers. Now up here, I'm zooming into the ground so you can see how big the stalks are. And this is about six, seven inches apart. I didn't measure, but I'm sure it's six inches. And they're glow, uh, growing close together and they're still thick. So uh, when you go up to the leaves, you know, the leaves are slightly turning brown because it is fall. The nights maybe drop down to 40. September, this is like mid-September. But up above, you see the beautiful flowers. Now, this is mid-September. The harvest, like I said, is pretty much gone in your garden. You have nothing left except the pumpkins, maybe some winter squash. And... Of course, the beautiful sunflowers. So mid-September, you got some bright yellow in your garden. Yes, some of them are beginning to dry out, which is totally fine, and that's what you want. Some leaves may be turning yellow, but harvest is almost here. Now, in the fall, the windy weather comes, and so it blows over everything, and they snap. So you do need a rope kind of to hold them up. Also, squirrels will climb up and tear them down. And there's many reasons why they fall, but one of the reasons is the wind. And then you have the bird damage. This could also be squirrels, maybe raccoons, but if you look on the ground, you just see seeds everywhere. So they will attract birds to your garden. Unfortunately, we do not want that. So I could always put a net over them or what I do is I just cut them down and I'm going to bring them to my shed but as you kind of like I'm going to zoom in and hopefully you see where the seeds are completely gone where some of the seeds are left so birds you know it's nice that they start and they peck one seed at a time and so you still have some left so I'm just going to bring these to my shed and dry them out in my shed
here I'm going to zoom in so you can see the actual damage. So this is where the seeds are gone completely. But towards the center, you notice that the birds actually left some. And so I'm still going to bring this to the shed, dry them out. But like I said, you know, the birds do a lot of damage. There are, is a way to prevent the birds. I don't really care because I have plenty. So anyways, like I said, this will go into my shed. I'm going to completely dry it out. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to pick at some of the seeds so you can see how the seeds are embedded into the actual sunflower. So, um, yeah, my fingernails are not the best, but that's how we pull them out. Here we have a sunflower head that is completely dried out. And first thing we do is we, these little flowers, we have to kind of brush them off. Of course, I'm doing this with one hand since I'm holding the camera in the other hand, but that's what you do. You brush off the flowers first. Next, we're gonna pluck out the seeds. Now, keep in mind, this has been drying in my sheds and I probably have like about 12 of them drying out. But what you do is, like I said, I'm doing this with one hand because I'm holding the camera in the other hand, but I'm going to pluck out the seeds and you guys get the general idea. Now I'm going to grab another sunflower head where the seeds somewhat dried out and same thing. I'm plucking it with one hand because I'm holding the camera in the other hand. Once the camera is off, I'm going to use two hands, which is much easier. This sunflower was drying in my shed. I managed to pluck out the dry seeds, but the seeds closer to the center, they're still wet. So we'll give them to the chickens. This here is a sheet pan filled with sunflower seeds, which I'm gonna put in my, my oven and dry them out. So I did like 300 for 20 minutes, then I dropped the temperature down to 200 and did it maybe for another half hour and you kept uh, checking to see once they're dried out. If you notice the uh, sunflower seeds i got a purple slash black and white slash gray the white slash gray ones came out much better they were bigger and the black ones they were small so i'm going to give them probably to the chickens or put them in the bird feeder and lastly i want to talk about what to do with the stalks keep in mind sunflowers have really thick stalks about two inches to maybe an inch and a half and you can't just throw them out because they're way too thick. So during World War II, this is a trick from World War II, Europe was going through war. You know, what do you feed your livestock or animals at the zoo? So this was one of the tricks they used to kind of compensate for the loss of food. And we're going to show you how to ground up corn stalks or even sunflower stalks and feed them to your livestock. get the idea so now here I gathered up a whole bucket full of chopped up stalks some from sunflower if you squeeze it it's kind of oily slash watery not really sure what the texture is but it's wet and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go give this to my chickens and keep in mind you could do any other plants I know the corn is a great plant as well but this video is about sunflower stalks and so I'm going to give them to my chickens, dump it. Um, hopefully the chickens will like it. I'm going to sit around here, wait for the chickens to see how they initially like it. But I'm definitely going to come back tomorrow and see for sure how much they ate. So here I'm going to step aside from behind so that I'm not scaring the chickens away. And as you see, they're, they're eating it. So they're pecking away at it. And so the main goal, main question is how much will they eat by tomorrow? So definitely we'll come back tomorrow and give you a heads up on how much they ate.
So here I am the next day. I am coming to my chicken coop to see how they ate up the ch uh, chopped up sunflower stock. And it's gone. All of it is gone. So they must have liked it because not a single speck is left. So this is one way to get rid of your sunflower stocks. Thank you for watching this video.